This is Mary. Welcome to the IHC Craft Room. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I made this beautiful dot painted cross for Easter. I'm going to show you every step that I took and all the materials that I used. So grab all your stuff and let's get crafty. For materials, we'll begin with a nine and a half by seven inch unfinished wood hanging cross, some black chalk paint, some acrylic paint in black, radiant gold, white, red, orange, and yellow, some matte varnish for base coat protection, and gloss varnish to protect the entire project. For tools, we'll be using dotting tools as always, a paint palette or paint pods, a paintbrush, emery boards or sandpaper, Q-tips, toothpicks, a cup of water, and a wet rag. Let's get started by sanding down the edges and the surface of this cross before we start working on painting the base coat. This is an unfinished cross, so the surface is quite rough, and you see that I'm using emery boards, which I like to call nail files, and I'm doing that because I find that it's easier to get into the corners using a small item like this as opposed to sandpaper or a sanding block. But as long as you sand it down, I'm not overly concerned with what you use. Just make sure that your surface ends up smooth. Once you have the surface smooth, it will be time to move on to painting the base coat. A general Mary rule is to do two thin coats for your base coat. But with chalk paint, you really could get away with just doing one if you want to. I don't. I end up doing two because I'm Mary and I make life hard whenever possible. Once that's dry, I'm going to apply two thin coats of matte varnish to seal the base coat and I do this so that if I make a mistake while I'm dot painting and I need to use a Q-tip to remove that error, this will ensure that I don't accidentally start stripping the base paint away. Now that our base coat is dry and protected, it's time to start drawing our design using a chalk pencil. I'm going to start with marking the center between the two arms of the cross, but I will promptly ignore that and start drawing random arbitrary lines with no plan or design. I just drew what looked nice to me. For this cross, I'm drawing inspiration from the beautiful murals and art found in the Orthodox religion. You can't walk into an Orthodox church without marveling at the beauty of the architecture and artistry. I've selected this vibrant color palette with that in mind, because you cannot see these gorgeous colors without thinking of that vibrant, beautiful artwork. And as I keep adding lines, I realize that I'm actually kind of going for like a stained glass kind of look. So let's see how this turns out. I'm using radiant gold acrylic paint and my current favorite paintbrush, which is super fine to make these lines stand out. It's a liner brush that I'm using and it allows me to create very fine lines, even though I'm not really doing that here. I am making them a little bit thicker because I do want these gold lines to stand out. If you don't have a liner paintbrush, worry not my little poodle. If you have a paint marker, you can totally use that to make these lines or you could just use the skinniest paintbrush you have even if it makes thicker lines, cause like that'll be totally pretty anyway. So do you boo, don't you worry about it. If you've watched any of my other videos first, thank you. And secondly, you probably notice a common theme of me talking about trying to be patient while I'm working on a project. So if you're also trying to build your patience muscle, this is a perfect exercise to strengthen it because rushing while painting these lines would be muy no bueno, mi amigos, muy. I've let about 24 hours pass and made sure that these lines are drier than the Sahara Desert before I start using a moist Q-tip to wipe away my chalk guidelines. As much as I hate saying this word, let me repeat, this Q-tip is moist. It is not dripping wet. That's very important because we don't want to introduce water to our project unless that's the look you're going for, which I am definitely not. So make sure that your Q-tip is only moist. Moist. Gross. Okay, here we go. It's time to start dotting. I'm going to start with the color red. This style of dot painting is very different than what I've shown on this channel before. Similar to the concept of walking the dots, I'm going to start off by using my largest stylus tool, which for me is the green three millimeter stylus. And I make sure to grab a lot of paint on my stylus. And then without refreshing the paint or adding any more to the stylus, I just keep dotting. You're going to get big dots and then they will diminish down to small dots. And just repeat this process over and over again, adding more paint to your stylus and just dot, dot, dot until you have no more paint left. And keep refilling, keep refilling, keep dotting. I'm trying to make sure that I'm not staying in lines, which is easy to do. 
I don't want to have that linear look here. The whole concept of this style is for it to be an explosion of dots that cover the area and provide this punch of color from afar. But as you get closer, you can see all of the varying sizes of dots and all of their beauty. I'm going to continue using the green three millimeter stylus, but I'll switch to yellow paint next. In most of my dot painting videos, I talk about the fact that the video that you're seeing is incredibly sped up and it's obvious. Anytime you're dot painting, you should be taking your time, taking deep breaths to steady yourself and to steady your hands. Dot painting can really be very relaxing and meditative. But with this type of dotting in particular, it's very easy to accidentally dot over a previous dot and make a big mess of everything. So I encourage you to do this in waves, meaning start off by leaving some noticeable gaps between each of the dots you place. Don't put your dots close together. Give yourself a lot of negative space between the dots that you're laying down as you're walking the dots. Let's switch over to some orange paint. What we're trying to do here is place dots everywhere. And once they dry, we'll come back and fill in those gaps. We'll make sure that the original dots are super dry and we'll use a much smaller stylus to get into all those little nooks and crannies to really fill in the dots. Now that I'm using white paint, you can really see how that white just pops next to the yellow and red dots. This is gonna look so great when it's done. Something else that I haven't mentioned yet is actually one of my number one never forget it rules about dot painting. So write this one down. Never leave a bubble unpopped. Never. It's just as bad as the word moist. No bueno. If you don't pop your bubbles, they will pop on their own and it'll be obvious in the dots that remain. And after all of the work, time and effort that you're putting into this beautiful creation, you really don't want a pop dot to insert itself into your finished piece of art. So don't forget to pop your own bubbles. I generally use a toothpick because I find it the sharpest and it usually does the job with very little effort. You can see that while I was talking about popping dots that I moved on to a much smaller stylus. This is the one millimeter blue stylus, but any small stylus that is going to give you a really petite dot will do. You can always jump between your two or three smallest stylus tools or stick with one and just regulate the amount of paint that you use in order to make smaller dots. But again, try to avoid overlapping your dots. I would recommend trying to use one of the smallest styluses you have just to hope that you can avoid overlapping. You can see that I'm very intentionally filling in all of the negative space that we left during our first layer of dots. Now I'm going to really focus on getting into those little spaces so that you can see only the tiniest bit of black from my base coat shining through. Just enough to give you the accents around each of these beautiful dots. Okay, well that's that. We're just going to keep going. We're going to keep adding small dots and filling in each of these sections. And since I enjoy watching this being done sped up, I'm going to do that with some fun music until we get to the finish and final reveal. So let's go! That didn't take as long as I thought it would. So what do you think? Beautiful, right? Thank you for joining me on this vibrant and colorful dot painted hanging cross exercise in creativity. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Comment below about what you think of this eye catching cross and don't forget to subscribe for future videos so that we can continue to get crafty together. Toodaloo!